it is a new formulation. So just like most of our herbicide tolerant technologies, you do have to use um, the systems formulation uh, aggressor. We possibly have used this exact active ingredient in the past under the name Assured 2, Quizalifot Piethyl. Um, it's labeled in many of our broadleaf crops, canola, cotton, beans, peas. These are grass-killing herbicides. They're graminicides, so they only kill grasses that have emerged. Residual weed control that we experience with Clearfield systems, that will not be with this technology. Again, we're only getting control of grasses that are up. We have to use a surfactant with our application, Some, anything from NIS, crop oil, MSO, um, those are all will be on the label. Four month rotation interval for most of our crops. Um, if we've sprayed any of these herbicides, we know that they work relatively slow, which is good. They target our meristematic tissues of our weeds, our growing point. So that whirl of the grass, when we have kill, usually you can kind of pluck it out when we talk about symptomology. So that's, that's this group of herbicides, ACCase or group one herbicides. If you haven't used Assure2, maybe you've used some of these products, Select Max. Um, which was valent and now is off patent. You can buy as a generic clethodim, post, which is cethoxidim. And then we actually already have a group one herbicide that is labeled in wheat and barley, which is Axial XL. So I remember one of the first questions I got was, well, why are we coming up with a herbicide tolerant wheat that we can spray a group one herbicide? We have Axial XL, right? And I guess this is some of the limitations of Axial. So if you look at the weave list of what Axial controls in Oklahoma, we're primarily using Axial to control Italian ryegrass. And then in some areas where we still have wild oat pressure, we might be using Axial. So the spectrum is pretty limited. Whereas this new herbicide tolerant t technology, we have a wider spectrum. It's going to control most of our annual grasses. Um, my number one concern with the technology, of course, is resistance. Anytime we introduce a herbicide tolerant cropping system, we're going to increase selection pressure. Um, for resistant weed biotypes. So this is Italian ryegrass, and I have been screening for ACCase resistance, uh, looking at Axial. I get a lot of uh, reports and worry that we have ryegrass in Oklahoma that is resistant to Axial XL. Everything I bring into the greenhouse, I have been able to kill. Anything that's alive, those are non-treated plants. Um, that doesn't mean we don't have axial resistance in Oklahoma. I just can't confirm it in the greenhouse. I, I think I see it sometimes in the field, and if you have a sample and you're willing to collect seed, please send it in. Most of the states around us have confirmed resistance, so if you don't have it in your field and axial is working, that's great. Um, be cautious of how often you're using it resistance could be on the horizon and why I'm a little nervous about overuse of this new technology since they're all group one herbicides. Um, I got a question not too long ago about comparing Clearfield and Coaxium. They are very different systems, but for the sake of just putting everything on one slide, here's kind of what I see the differences are. Uh, with Clearfield, we got post-emergence control of a lot of grasses and broadleaf weeds, and we also got residual control, which is nice. We don't get that with coaxium. We only get post-control, and it's all only of grasses, so no broadleaf weed control. Um, one complaint with Clearfield has been that BASF did change their Beyond label to only offer suppression of feral rye. Uh, coaxium will do a pretty good job on feral rye, and I'll show you what we've seen here in a minute. Um, Dr. Brett Carver, our wheat breeder, he has just signed a licensing agreement with Lima Grain where he is breeding the oxygen trait into OSU varieties, but he told me it's going to be about three years until we see something in the field. And so one 
concern might be you might not have it into regionally adapted varieties yet, but that's to come. Um, the target for coaxium is bromes, feral rye, jointed goat grass are really tough to control uh, winter annual grasses. So I want to talk about some of them that might be a fit for coaxium and then also mention how we're controlling these plants without coaxium as well. So Italian ryegrass, ryegrass, Marshall ryegrass, all the same plant. Um, I think we know this weed pretty well. Bromes, which you will hear is a major target for coaxium. We have a lot of bromus species in Oklahoma. These are kind of the big ones, true cheat on your left. Um, one of our taller bromes gets up above the wheat. Japanese brome has the awns um, that bend at 90 degrees. Downy brome, one of our hairiest bromes. And then this brome on the right, which I think is the most important brome, this bromus catharticus. It doesn't really look like the other bromes. Um, this is rescue grass. And it has, I usually describe it as that two-dimensional seed head that you can pinch between your fingers. If you've ever tried to control rescue grass, who has rescue grass? Then you know it doesn't behave like the other bromes. You can't use a power flex or an outrider on it and see control. It's tough. It's in that feral rye jointed goat grass kind of category. So, of course, we've been looking at this new technology to see what it can bring. And then here's our other really tough ones. And we know joining goat grass can hybridize with wheat, which makes uh, grain quality extremely challenging. So we've been looking at feral rye control. This is our third season. So you can see on the left, um, that's a non-treated control. And then on the right, what coaxium is bringing. These are a number of our treatments, regardless of the time we went out, our rate, our surfactant, we're well in that 95% control or greater. This year, 16, 17, if you remember 16, at least where I am, we did have decent moisture, so we have a nice flush of feral rye. Because we're only getting post-emergence control, something to think about if you're dealing with a winter annual grass that has a second flush is you might have to make a second application. Um, no residual control. So then we start thinking about price. Um, I've only received prices um, from one gentleman who's selling some product in Tonkawa, and it's going to be $14.50 a bushel for seed and $11 per acre for each application. So could be one in the fall, could be one in the spring. Um, you could do a sequential, yes. So max, you could go up to 16 fluid ounces. So it's at eight. Eight, yeah. Yeah, so if you compare it to Clearfield, you'll, and you do the math, on average, they price themselves just below Clearfield to be competitive. Um, yeah, you still need to add a surfactant as well. And you can add a nitrogen source, which would be helpful. Sure, too. Before you collect it, they want a nitrogen source with COC or MSO. Uh, it won't, rec it won't, um, not like beyond MSO alone or crop oil has been doing a pretty good job in really arid conditions, adding a fertility source sometimes is helpful, um, but it won't be as strict as that, if that makes sense. Um, what we've seen with rescue grass, Gary Strickland, who is in the southwest part of the state, has been dealing with controlling this a little bit longer than me, and he's been helping me with some locations. So as far as control, besides clear field systems, we can't really find anything that will do well on rescue grass. So this will be another option. And this is with both MSO and NIS at that kind of base rate of eight fluid ounces. Kind of a boring slide, but I guess good when we're thinking about rescue grass control, looking at a number of rates, surfactants, timings, the control was, was good. 
Um, so that's not really the challenge. We know that the herbicide is working. We also know when herbicides work really well, we select for those resistant biotypes in the field. So that's really the challenge. Um, some things we're still working on with this technology, optimal rates. Yes, if you, if you go online, aggressor label is already available and you can see rate ranges for all the weeds. We're still trying to um, look at rates for Oklahoma, and just confirm those, looking at densities of weeds. And then anytime we introduce a herbicide tolerant crop, we know with extend and enlist, we have concern for off target movement. So we're doing a little bit of work on that. I have a graduate student on that. Um, mapping resistance, and then I mentioned Dr. Carver's lab is working on getting the trait into OSU germplasm. Okay, so I want to talk about the tough weeds and just mention that investment in this technology isn't an absolute if you want to control them. There are other things we can do. So I've been working quite a bit with Italian ryegrass. I'm pretty happy with what our delayed pre-emergence herbicides are doing for Italian ryegrass. So we have three group 15 herbicides. Um, pyroxysulfone is the active ingredient that's in Zidua and Anthem Flex, and then also Axiom. These are herbicides that go out at spike in wheat. We call them delayed pre-emergence because they go out right when wheat has come up. So they're not true pre's. Um, those products range from $12 to $16 an acre, depending on what you pick. Really happy with the control I'm seeing from these products. Of course, they are dependent on being incorporated, right? So they're, they are pre's for the ryegrass, and when I have decent moisture, they work great, and in dry falls, they can be very challenging. Um, we are tank mixing some of these products with metribuzin, which I know can be a little bit of a dirty word in wheat. We're usually tank mixing at a rate of two ounces per acre, which is pretty low. Sometimes we'll see some yellowing and burn, um, but nothing that's translated into any yield losses. Um, I like this picture. This is a grower's field in Yukon who has one of the worst rescue grass populations I've seen. Um, and we are, this is our best treatment, doesn't look that impressive, um, but we were having success in two applications of Beyond in double stop wheat with a methylated seed oil, but at the end of the day, the cost of investing in that just didn't make sense, and so he's rotated out, and I think he um, put this field in sesame, and that's kind of going to be my ending note is the cheapest way we can control all these tough grasses is to rotate out. Um, this is, again, those orange bars that's beyond um, in the spring and in the fall on rescue grass control. So if there is something we can use today and we aren't willing to rotate out a wheat, that's an option. It's just expensive. Um, another cultural practice for rescue grass is planting date. If you have rescue grass, then you know that it is our very first winter annual grass that emerges. It's the very first thing you see. So if you have any kind of flexibility in planting date, I can't always get the forage producers to have flexibility, um, but this is the difference in two weeks of planting. If you can let that flush come up and either burn it down with glyphosate, which still works great on the bromes, or you can till, then that can make a major difference if you have flexibility. And so kind of a take home for Italian ryegrass, I told, I've only told a couple groups, um, we've talked about coaxium, but I almost have begged people, let's not use coaxium on ryegrass. We have axial, it's doing a good job post-emergence for the most part, and we have three delayed pre-products that are working. And so I would like to see those products stick around and not increase our resistance pressure too much. Um, bromes, we have a number of herbicides. We have pre-plant herbicides, we have pre-herbicides, Olympus, Prepare, Post-Emergence, we have PowerFlex, Outrider. Those products do a decent job on most of the bromes, unless you have rescue grass. 
If you have rescue grass, clear field, coaxium, those are tools. Um, barrel rye, clear field has been pretty marginal, so coaxium would be a tool for feral rye. Um, but again, I think if we have the flexibility to rotate out, we know that that, that works in cleaning up um, these species. So some things to think about. I'm sure we're running out of time. Does investing in the system make sense for you? Um, can we control these tough weeds in other ways? I would say yes, we can. Um, is this a tool? Every once in a while I'm going to run into someone that says, I want to invest in it, I don't want to rotate out a wheat, and then that's fine, let's figure out how to use it best. It's going to have a very similar stewardship program to Clearfield. You can't use more than two years and we'll have kind of strict guidelines on rotation. Um, will this system increase selection pressure for ACCA's resistance? Um, yes. And I will end with a question slide and my contact information. One minute. So if we have any questions, um, we can go longer than that. I'm happy to answer them. Yeah, so tank mixing, there's some things we're still trying to answer, and I'm doing some tank mix work um, this spring. Like, I've got questions on Culex. I haven't tank mixed it with Culex yet. You are going to have to tank mix with a broadleaf. You cannot tank mix aggressor with amines. There is antagonism there. So that would be, um, you need to use an ester. Um, what else have we done some tank mixes with? Mostly our auxins, and then again, haloxifen, Culex, just because it's so new, we don't, I don't have an answer for that yet. I'm not anticipating there'll be injury, but I want some data first. For sure, what will be on the label is you cannot tank mix with an amine um, auxin. Mm -hmm.